Good afternoon, everyone. Here we are again, another year, another beautiful day, and another great honoree. On behalf of the Owens Campus Employee Hall of Fame Committee, welcome to our 23rd Annual Hall of Fame Induction Ceremony. As it is stated in your program, I think everyone has a program now, the Hall of Fame is a tribute to full-time Owens Campus employees who have served the college with distinction and, con and have contributed to the growth, quality, and public acceptance of Delaware Technical and Community College. As I was reading Merle's bio, which is a nice one, <laughs> I, th I thought about what I might say uh, to you today on behalf of the committee. I came across a quote by Tony Dorsett, former NFL legend, which exemplifies Merle Moore. Tony said, to succeed, you need to find something to hold on to, something to motivate you, something to inspire you. Merle and all of the Hall of Fame inductees did just that. Each found success in their own way. They held on to it, got excited about it, and motivated and inspired others. Their success has contributed to the success of Delaware Tech. Today, our committee is very pleased to honor the very humble Merle C. Moore as our 2015 inductee to the Owens Campus Employee <laughs> Hall of Fame. And on the side, it was pulling some teeth to try to get him to do this, because he really is a humble person. It is my pleasure today to, to uh, see so many of you here today on behalf of Merle. Please allow me to make some introductions. We are honored to have here with us today the president of Delaware Technical Community College, Dr. Mark Brainerd. The Owens Campus Vice President and Campus Director, Dr. Ileana Smith. <laughs> State Representative, Steve Smith. <laughs> State Representative, Ronald Gray. <laughs> Former Secretary of State, Dr. Harriet Smith-Windsor. Delaware Tech, Tech trustee, Dr. Bucky Owens, and his wife, Dr. Carol Owens, who are also Delaware Tech Legacy Society members. <laughs> Our Legacy Society members today, Lynn Fawcett, I'm not sure if Lynn's here, uh, Philip Bills, and Bonnie Atkins. Our Owens Development Council members, if you could please stand as a group as I call your name. Chair Dr. Bucky Owens, Stell Parker Selby, Marlene Elliott Brown, Trish Rodriguez, Philip Bills, Mike South, and Jim Barr. We are honored to also recognize the first chair of the Owens Development Council, who is present, attorney and author Everett Moore. <laughs> We're also pleased today to recognize past members of the Hall of Fame, our Hall of Fame honorees who are with us today. Our last year, it's Ralph Butch Lee, 2014. <laughs> Charlotte Purnell Langro, 2003. Uh, Harold McTeer, is he here? Maybe he's coming. Lois Studi, 2004. Walter Studi, 2004. Uh, is Anna Besti here? There she is, 2007. And our Hall of Fame committee, Dr. Eliana Smith, 
Lynn Fawcett, who's not here with us today, Karen Swain, Myrna Abbott, John Roach, and uh, we have some that couldn't be with us today, Lynn Wajda, who's ill, Veronica Oni, and Jerry Hammond. But we thank them for the work that they've done on the committee. We would also like to thank the Delaware Tech Mus Music Club, and we're always excited to have them as a part of our events. Michael Wingate, who is a general business major. Um, Ryan Blakeman is an elementary education major. Tim Willis, who is computer information systems. And the advisor, Corey Dunn, who is our Stand By Me financial coach. So again, thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going to start with a delicious lunch and you get a little bit more time to fellowship with each other and then we'll start our program. So we're gonna follow now the directions of Lighthouse Cove and listen to some music. <laughs> I hope that everyone enjoyed your lunch and your time of seeing old friends. Before we uh, continue with our program and um, before we start in introducing our next speaker, I call on Representative Smick and Gray to present a state proclamation in honor of Merle. Ron, I think we were supposed to use the steps to my left. <laughs> I was following your example, and I, it wasn't a very good one, apparently. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting with uh, Dr. Harriet Smith, and uh, she will let you know that I am not the example to follow. <laughs> the, um, this, this is something that means so much to each and every one of us, but I have to let you know how humble that we are to actually be before this gentleman today, Merle, uh, you know, Merle Moore. It's just his family's here, his son. I didn't know that you had a son that had an influence. Already he's taught my son something over at uh, Sussex Tech. He was a driving instructor. And my son does know how to drive. He's done, <laughs> thank you. The, uh, <laughs> That's good because the question was that you know how to drive. <laughs> Now, you haven't followed me on the highway, I hope. <laughs> I can't keep up with you. <laughs> Just a disclaimer, I've been a uh, state trooper for many years, so I have good training in, in how to drive like that, you know. The, uh, it's called... Uh... <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> uh, Merle, it's... Um, it's absolutely my honor to be here because you, you influenced my life as, as a very young man. Um, you helped me when I was in the Delaware National Guard and then again when I was a state trooper trying to get an education on taking one or two classes at a time. Um, behind you are some other uh, very wonderful people that have helped me along. You've got Walt Studi in a room. Who needs anything else? The, uh, <laughs> you know, the, um, but to, to, to see your family here uh, where, and I was just telling Jim about this, Jim Atkins, what a cast of this particular community of Sussex County. When you have an educator, when you have a, uh, an attorney, and you have a realtor, as all brothers, how can you not touch everyone's life? So we all know you, we're, we're happy to be part of your family, and I appreciate that you continue to be involved with the community. Don't ever give that up. Your heart's as big as this room, and I don't ever want to see it, us lose that asset. Sir, um, on behalf of the General Assembly and the House of Representatives, would you read this? Because I actually love this guy. I might get kind of choked up. Okay, sure. Uh, this is from the uh, State of Delaware House of Representatives. It's a tribute to be it, and I'll go through it here, be it hereby known to all that the House of Representatives acknowledges Merle Moore, 
Delaware Technical Community College Owens Campus Hall of Fame inductee. We recognize Mr. Moore as he is honored with, with this special acknowledgement. He retired from the Owens Campus as Department Chair for Business Administration Program in July 2001. We commend his outstanding dedication and commitment. The House of Representatives extends its sincere congratulations and directs this tribute be issued the 16th of day, April 2015 today. And it's signed by Speaker of the House, Pete Schwarzkopf, Chief Clerk of the House, Rich Puffer, and our one and only Steve Smick here. And I might even sign below here too if he lets me. I would like to do that, yes, yes. So anyway. Can you come up here and receive this? There are some steps to the side. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I'm a slow learner. Well, thank you. Congratulations on, the, on the behalf of the House of Representatives and from Steve and I. Thank, thank you. Uh, a, a little bit of history. Uh, Mr. Moore was uh, my class advisor at um, uh, Inner River High School, and we have a fine, and also Patty, uh, was Patty LaCourt, now it's Patty Bunning, but. Um, not, everybody, not all the advisors come back every five years at our class reunions, but Mr. Moore always has, and uh, we always enjoy seeing him. So he's uh, really appreciate you doing that. So that's just a sidebar to it's a little background to have. So again, congratulations, Steve. Anything else you want to add? For the man that taught me that the official vehicle for Sussex County was a pickup truck, I. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, can, I, can I get you to pull up your camera so you can take a picture of this this fine gentleman? First step right over here oh. and open that thing up. He's not used to this. No. <laughs> Thank you. You want to say no. it? No. You got, oh, more, you got more to say. No, I got more to say. All right. Here. That was very nice. Let's just give him a round of applause. And now I would like to introduce Dr. Ileana Smith, Vice President and Campus Director of the Owens Campus, who will begin our remarks in honor of Merle C. Moore. Well, good afternoon to this room full of wonderful friends. As Denise has said, this Hall of Fame is a really special event for Delaware Tech. It is our time to honor the very best examples of Delaware Tech employees. And we're so delighted today to honor Merle Moore. He's sitting there, you're doing really well. You're very <laughs> close. <cool. laughs> uh, Merle has really made significant contributions to the advancement of this college and his connection to Delaware Tech has remained strong and true to this day. So we celebrate you today, Merle, and we say thank you to you. You know, we're all related to Merle by bonds of friendship, bonds of colleague relationships, and bonds of admiration and respect. And some of us in this room are related to Merle by family ties. And we have many relatives present today. So let me introduce by name his pride and joy. His son, Merle C. His daughter, you stand up. His daughter, <laughs> his daughter-in-law, Heather, and his granddaughters, Dorothy Ann, and Julia Regan. Let us give them a round of applause. And let me tell the four of you that you are the love of his life. He speaks about you often, and every time he does, he beams with pride, and we can see why. What beautiful family you have, Merle. Now, I know there's a lot of others in here, but I'm afraid I'm going to mess up. Um, 
if I try to call each of you by name because we've got a family tree here of brothers, sister, uncles, cousins, in-laws, nephews, and other relations. So let me do it as a group. And I ask that all of Merle's family please stand up and be recognized. All of you who are related to Merle Moore. <laughs> you know, and let us say to all of you, Merle C. and his family and all of you, we believe you too deserve credit for Merle's accomplishments. So today is the day to say thank you to all of you for supporting him as he has done all that he has done in his life. So we thank you. Today's your day as well. Um, and everybody here, you're here to make this day special for Merle. We truly value your presence because we know it'll be a memorable day for Merle for the rest of his life. Uh, now, I know Denise Cooch introduced people uh, before lunch, and I wish I could introduce another big group individually by name, but I must do it again as a group, and that group is the Delaware Tech retirees. So other than Merle, you know he's a retiree, there are many other retirees in the room. I'd like you all to please stand. If you retired from Delaware Tech, Merle, it's a tribute to you that I think that group's about 20, 25 people present uh, who care about you and are here to celebrate you. And I may get in trouble if I go down this path, but I'm going to do it anyway. There's one retiree here who I think holds a record. Um, there's somebody. Let <laughs> I'm afraid I did. So I could get myself in trouble, but I'm not giving her the mic, but I'm just going to go to <laughs> All right. Let me give you a little history. We were kind of all trying to get this straight, but the legislation that, you know, created Delaware Tech was signed in 1966. The first class of students, I think 367 of them, came in 1967. The second class came in 1968. And we have a retiree who was hired in 1968. Only one? Going once? <laughs> it's Sue Pepper Wapham right here. <laughs> And while we were checking this out, we found out that also at that table is another retiree who came as a student in 1968. She's a retiree and a Delaware Tech alumnus, and that's Bonnie Atkins, right? <laughs> oh, Everett, you came in 1968 as well. So look at this. Isn't this Sussex County wonderful? All these <laughs> interconnections here. So thank you guys for being here. That really shows, you know, how connected we all are um, and how much we care because we still come together for things like this. So thank you. Now I know there are newer employees in the audience who don't know all these retirees but I think it's significant that they're here. They're here to give respect. They're here to give respect to those who came before. And I'm happy that they can also see at events like this how very strong and how very big our Delaware Tech family is. I'm especially happy to have present my mentee in the college's leadership development program who, like Merle, teaches our business students. She is the business department instructional director for our Stanton George campus, June Rue. I'd like to introduce her. June. <laughs> uh, 
And I, too, want to recognize our Hall of Fame committee. They do an excellent job preparing this event. Um, I want to thank the marketing department. They're certainly part of getting this ready, our music club. But I especially want to recognize the main caretaker of our Hall of Fame tradition, Denise Cooch. And I need to do that, especially this year, her last year as the committee chair. She has served the Hall of Fame committee for 17 years and as chair for the last five. She allowed me to say this, Denise will retire this summer after 43 years of service to Delaware Tech. Denise. <laughs> Stand up. Like Sue, I think they came to work here when they were two, right? right? <laughs> All right. Thank you. This event is very special. It does let us pay homage to our rich Delaware Tech history. We recognize that our present and our future are built on the foundation created by the college employees who came before us. Merle Moore is a very deserving honoree. Super steady, super dependable, and super constant. You'll hear about Merle from Walt's Tootie. <laughs> <coughs> But I wanted to reflect on a part of the story that I think speaks to his character. When I think of Merle, I think of one word, loyalty. Merle will tell you he is a simple country boy. He loves Sussex County. There is no place he'd rather be than right here in his community, in his home. He loves his roots. He is a wise man who never worried about the grass maybe being greener on the other side. And it is that wisdom, that love, that sincerity that made his connection to Delaware Tech so special. Merle feels deeply what this college has done for the place he calls home. He knows that this county he loves is better for this college. He knows that the people who live here are better for this college. And Merle believes that he is better for this college. This quiet, no frills kind of man runs deep when it comes to caring and showing dedication to the things that matter. His loyalty to Delaware Tech was apparent when he worked here, and his loyalty to Delaware Tech is apparent now. To this day, Merle's commitment to this college is unwavering. He is present, he is active, he is a supporter, a donor, a development council member, and a true advocate for community college education. Merle is a man who says what he believes. He is the kind of man who walks the talk. He might joke about himself, saying that what you see is what you get. What you see in Merle is what you get. And I call that integrity. Integrity, loyalty, dedication to his students, to the college, to his family, and to his friends. Merle, we see that still water runs deep in you. Beneath that simplicity are the qualities that really matter in life. So we want this audience to know 
and understand why Merle deserves this distinction. And most importantly, we want to thank him. So thank you, Merle, for your significant contribution. And thank you for giving your example to our Delaware Tech legacy. So we will induct Merle and hear from him a little later in the program. And let me lighten it up. I'll tell you a secret. The two people who hate public speaking the most <laughs> in this room are the two people who are going to speak last. <laughs> All right, you're one of the two. Uh, you know, Merle was joking that we needed to talk before we ate, because uh, I think he was afraid he'd pass out, you know. But he's doing very well. I don't know what's going on, but he's, he's very calm. And we're building up the excitement here for your grand entrance. So right now, I am very pleased to introduce Delaware Tech's president, Dr. Mark Brainerd. He has done an outstanding job leading our college since last summer. He has set the tone for our open, caring, and welcoming culture. He has made students our top priority. He has recognized the need for work-life balance for our employees. He has clearly communicated and addressed the capital funding challenge that we face at Delaware Tech, and he has led us in telling the Delaware Tech story, a story that he exemplifies well as a proud Delaware Tech alumnus. Please welcome Mark. Thank you very much. As I say every time I'm here at the Owens campus, it's great to be where Delaware Tech was born. And it's events like this where we can really celebrate the history of Delaware Tech and see graduates uh, and, and retirees. It's just a great place to uh, spend the day, if not more. Um, and I say this every time I'm here. I don't know what Denise had for lunch, but I'm having it too. Uh, she's retiring after 43 years, and last year I thought she was the president of the SGA. And I, it's really unbelievable, but... Uh, <laughs> To Merrill Moore, Walt Studi, and to all the retirees and friends of the college who are here in the audience, welcome back to the Owens campus. Uh, Merrill, I know you think that this room is packed because of you. They're really here for the second annual Walt Studi Comedy Hour. And uh, we, we, uh, we're, we're all looking forward to that. Uh, but we take time out of our lives today to honor someone who, <laughs> well, we, obviously we can't wait for you. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, we're honoring someone who's had just a tremendous impact on the entire community, not just here at Delaware Tech, but the entire community. We honor an extraordinary employee who was uh, a tremendous advocate for our students, but also a, a, an extraordinary retiree who remains active in this community. Uh, Merrill, our, our congratulations to you, a special welcome to your family who comprises half this side of the room. Uh, I know they all share this moment with you. Uh, this is a time to celebrate your many contributions to the college. You've obviously helped drive our success, and we hope that you feel ownership and all the recognition and the awards that the college has received over the years for uh, serving our students. I was thinking about this program uh, last week, and it actually reminded me of one of my favorite books, and that's about servant leadership. Uh, a number of years ago, a, a guy by the name of Robert Greenleaf wrote a book called Servant Leadership. And uh, he coined the phrase, wrote books, did presentations, and he said, quote, the servant leader is the servant first. It begins with the natural feeling that one wants to serve first, then conscious choice brings one to aspire to lead rather than wanting to lead and then seek to serve others. The difference manifests itself in the care taken by the servant first to make sure that other people's highest priority needs are being served. The best test of this is, do those served 
grow as people? Do they become healthier, wiser, freer, more autonomous, more likely themselves to become servants? A servant leader focuses primarily on the growth and well-being of people and the communities to which they belong. My thesis, Greenleaf said, is that caring for people is the rock upon which a good society is built. And when you look at Merrill's career, the, the early part, you see words like teacher, advisor, coach, mentor, creator, volunteer. As time passes, you, then you see words like department chair, bank director, business leader, church trustee, and then back to teacher, who look for the best in others and help them fulfill their goals. Merrill, I personally couldn't come here today without thinking that we are honoring the consummate public servant leader. And uh, I think that's something that you should be proud of. I know all of Delaware Tech is very, very proud of that. You're someone who dedicated time, talent, skills, expertise to serve others, your students who became leaders. I think it's just a great, um, great example. And along the way, you came to help lead not only building a better Delaware Tech, but a better Sussex County and state of Delaware. So thank you, thank you very much for everything you've done. And uh, I'll sit down now, because I can't wait to hear from Walt. So. <laughs> Do we need a drum roll now? Yay! So I get to do this formal introduction. So I got to say that now, dying to come to the podium <laughs> is Merle's fellow business instructor, his department chair, and later his dean of instruction, a Delaware Tech Hall of Fame inductee himself. And I can't forget to say, the husband of the well-known nurse, educator, and never lost for words, Lois Tootie. <laughs> Let us please welcome for the second year in a row as our event speaker, the one and only Walt Studie. <laughs> I can't believe they had me back this year. <laughs> I thought after last year that I had it made, then Merle gets the bright idea that I speak on his behalf, and I, <laughs> I didn't know if it was a conspiracy between Ileana and Lois to get rid of me, or, <laughs> or what. But anyway, it, it is an honor to be here for my friend, my buddy, and takes me a while, but I uh, first met Merle in 1981 when he applied for a position in the business department and somehow he got the job. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I've often wondered, you know, but I think it was politics, to tell you the truth. And all these things that Ileana said, I, you know, I don't recognize him. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly after Merle started teaching in the business department, he came into my cubicle and he said, you want to hear a good one? Well, he told me, I think the filthiest, dirtiest joke I ever heard <laughs> in my life before or since. But anyway, we've been friends. I knew he was going to be a friend then because he had a sense of humor. And I, I like someone with a sense of humor. Merle began teaching management courses, even though his expertise is accounting. But he stuck with it until the late Bob Lingo retired, and then he started teaching the accounting courses. And I don't know, it was about, what, 1990, somewhere around in there. And then... Merle and I used to go to lunch together all the time. He told, he told some things that were not really quite true uh, 
on, at my Lois and my induction, uh, he said that every morning at 8.30 when I got to work, I called him to see what time we were going to lunch. <laughs> and that was a partial truth. He didn't tell the whole truth because if I hadn't called him by 9 o'clock, I assure you he'd be at my door <laughs> wanting to know what time we were going to lunch. Bear with me. When Harriet, Dr. Smith was Dean of Instruction, I became the Assistant Dean of Instruction and Merle became the Acting Department Chair. Well, after a while, I asked Dr. Smith that, to let me, release me and I'd like, so I, she put me back in the department and Merle went back to instructor. So then when Dr. Smith went to Dover as, as uh, Governor Carper's Director of Personnel, I believe it was, Merle became, and I was appointed Dean of Instruction, Merle became department chair again, and Merle said to me, would you make up your hmm mind? He said, <laughs> I'm beginning to feel like a yo-yo. <laughs> I'm about finished with this torture. <laughs> I can't even get my page apart. If there's anything I hate worse than this, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Last week I went to a funeral in Milford, and who was working? Lo and behold, I guess Merle's having financial problems. <laughs> he, he was working for George Short. So I asked George, I said, is the labor market really that tight? <laughs> so again, Tuesday night, the late Dan Hall, I went to his viewing, and Merle was there, and I asked, George then, I said, are you, you know, you're kidding yourself. If you think you're going to get any work out of him, I said, Jack Owens tried for 20 years and couldn't, couldn't do it. But honestly, Merle always was a great instructor. Never one time did I hear a complaint from a student or faculty, whatever. And then when he went into accounting, of course, he even was better. Even though he was great as a management instructor, he was in his forte as, as an accounting instructor. Merle's been a great friend for many years, since 1981, and there's never a more deserving person to get this honor than Merle. Congratulations, Merle. Let's give another round of applause for our speakers today. For the induction, I ask that Merle come forward, Dr. Brainer and Dr. Smith. Yes. Well, somebody needs to get on that side. Okay. <laughs> they both can't get over there. There you go. Okay. Are we ready? We're ready. <laughs> Delaware, ready? Delaware Technical Community College proudly inducts Merle C. Moore into the Owens Campus Employee Hall of Fame. You may unveil the plaque. Yeah. And now we will hear from our honoree. Oh,
Walt is definitely a tough act to follow. <laughs> and I know he likes this so much up here. Thank you, Denise, Eliana, Mark, Walt. Now, I guess what you did realize that I ended up having the last say. Good. <laughs> now, but before I get started, I would like to apologize to those of you who aren't native Sussex Countyans, because I am. And even though I speak two languages, I'm only fluent in one, Sussex County ease. Some of you may need an interpreter to understand. Now, I want you all to know that I let Walt read my speech to get his comments. And during this speech, I've decided to end up to add Walt's comments. Some of them weren't very nice, as you can tell. Now, as of August 1st of this year, I will have been retired 14 years and it is great. Do you know the only bad thing about retirement? It's the people that ask you, what do you do? <laughs> what don't people understand about retirement? <laughs> you do nothing. <clears throat> and I am very good at it. And Walt said, amen. <laughs> you have to pace yourself. Don't be in a hurry. You have the rest of your life to get things done. Now, a lot of people can't handle the stress <laughs> of doing nothing. But I can, and Walt said, amen. <laughs> but if I should get bored, I know being a technology geek like I am, <laughs> I can spend hours learning new things about my VCR, <laughs> my flip phone, and my antenna TV. <laughs> Why, just two weeks ago, I, I sent my first text. My brother Everett sent me a text, and I replied with a no. It only took me an hour to do that. I'll never understand why he didn't call me. I would l rather talk than type. Now let's talk about this Hall of Fame. After I received the letter from Eliana about this honor, Denise Gooch called and needed five things from me. A bio, a speaker to introduce me, a guest list, a three to five minute speech, and it's going to be longer than that, and a professional portrait. This really stressed me out. <laughs> so I told my dear friend, Joanne, we just got to get away for a couple days. <laughs> so we went to Gumborough <laughs> for the weekend <clears throat> and stayed at the Hilton. <laughs> that is Matilda Hilton's bed and breakfast. We had a real good time looking at the fire trucks and counting chicken houses. This really calmed me down. Once we got back, I went right over to Steve Tice Photography Studio in Seaford. Steve did the best he could with what he had to work with. Walt said, you can say that again. Next, I need to pick someone to introduce me. I immediately thought of three people. Uh, three people who love public speaking. Sue Pepper Wampum. <laughs> That's a real Sussex County name. <laughs> Anna Mayla Gates, Betsy, and Wild Walt Studi. I eliminated Sue real quick because she has known me like forever, and I knew my family, and my minister was going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> then I thought about Anna Mae, but I eliminated her because of the five minute time allotment. <laughs> it takes her five minutes to say hello. 
And she also specializes in funeral eulogies. <laughs> so that left my friend Wild Walt, who loves public speaking and really has a way with words. And he quickly accepted, which made me suspect. <laughs> I know paybacks can be rough, and it was. To get serious now, I would like to thank the committee for giving me this honor. It is greatly appreciated, but I know whatever I have accomplished in life is because I have been blessed with the support of my family, my church, my friends, my students, and my colleagues. First, I would like to introduce my and thank my siblings. First, we have my older brother, Ronald, and his wife, Pat. Ronald is our financial advisor, health advisor, <laughs> and an expert on old country music. <laughs> Next, my younger brother, Jay Everett Jr. Everett is our legal advisor, family genealogist, and author. His last book was called Growing Up Country. Surprise. <laughs> <clears throat> last but not least, my younger sister, the angel. <laughs> Teresa Faye Moore Adams and her husband, Tom. She is our little mom, and she keeps us together as a family by having family dinners every holiday, and we appreciate that. Now I would like to talk about those who supported us as we were growing up. First, our parents, Mr. and Mrs. J. Everett Moore Sr. Even though they never completed high school, they always stressed the importance of education to us. They said, an education can never be taken from you. Each of us graduated from college. They also constantly told us we could be whatever we wanted to be. Our mother also stressed that everyone has some good in them. Look for it. And if you can't say something nice about somebody, don't say anything at all. I believe the emphasis placed on Education and my mother's belief in the goodness of people greatly influenced my career choice. Our two uncles, dad's brothers and aunts also supported us and gave us guidance. First Uncle Carlton, who's here today, and Aunt Hilda, who wasn't able to be here today, have always been there to support us. In fact, they were the ones in 1962 who picked up this homesick boy at Wake Forest College in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. You will never realize how great I felt when I saw family. And I was going home to Sussex County. And thanks, Uncle Carlton. Our Uncle Charles and Aunt Margaret, that's Cousin Myrna's Abbott's mother and father, are no longer with us. Uncle Charles was a man of conviction and dedication. He was an environmentalist before it was cool. He knew if pesticides and herbicides would kill insects and weeds, they weren't good for man either. And he never allowed them on his farm at a great financial loss. He was also dedicated to his wife, Margaret, who had polio and was paralyzed for 25 years. She had to remain in a rocking bed to breathe. Now, Aunt Margaret was paralyzed but not an invalid, because she was a decision maker in that household. She was also the most upbeat person I've ever known, and I wish my son could have known her. I'm very proud also to have the middle name of Charles. Now, I would like to point out to you just how Sussex County we are. Our parents and uncles and aunts never lived no more than four miles from the home farm. Okay. Now, I would like to introduce my son and his family, whom I'm very proud. My son, Merle C., is a driver ed teacher at Sussex, Sussex Tech, and his wife, Heather, is a science teacher at Sussex Academy. He attended Delaware Tech for a semester, then transferred to Salisbury State University and graduated from the Purdue School of Business. Heather was a graduate of the Academic Challenge Program here at Delaware Tech and the University of Delaware. Heather is the daughter of Patty Bunning, 
okay, a member of the class of 1973 at Indian River High School, of which I was the advisor. <laughs> Small Sussex County. My son and daughter-in-law have blessed me with two beautiful granddaughters who are here today, Dorothy Ann and Julia Reagan. Now, my son and his family lives less than four miles from our home farm. We are truly Sussex County. Okay? While I'm introducing people at this table, I would also like to introduce a very dear friend of mine, Joanne Rostron. She's a foreigner from Pennsylvania. From Pennsylvania. <laughs> Therefore, she doesn't understand half of what I'm saying. I think that really helps our relationship. <clears throat> I would like to thank her for putting up with me for over seven years. You know what Walt said? Poor woman. <laughs> Next, I would like to talk about our church. The fellowship at our church, St. John's United Methodist at Springfield Crossroads, a suburb of Georgetown, <laughs> gives me peace and the strength to maintain a positive attitude in adverse situations. We just lost Dan Hall, who was a former colleague here at the college and an important member of our congregation. Dan and I often talked about all the management principles and theories we had been taught and had taught and came to the conclusion none are better than the golden rule. If you follow it, you're going to do all right in life and in business. I ask that you keep Dan's family in your prayers, and I would like to thank our minister, Reverend Walter Rees, and his wife, Gina, and my church friends for being here today. Thank you. The greatest support and satisfaction a teacher can receive is from a successful student. Nothing pleases me more than to have former students come up to me and say they enjoyed my class and they found the course helped them in their lives and careers. I see many prior students and advisees here today that have been very successful and I thank you for being here. Uh, I don't, I've, there's quite a few of them I, that I'm afraid I will miss some so I'll just, uh, the two of them that have been up here already, I certainly appreciate you coming today and Patty as well. I would like to thank, also like to thank my neighbors who, Walter and Maureen back there. Uh, he's German, she's a New Yorker, and I'm from Sussex County. <laughs> Talk about the communication problems. <laughs> we, get out, we can get through sometimes together, okay? Then there's Bob and Barbara Holston. Bob is a foreigner also. He come from Schenkatek. <laughs> but Barbara is from Sussex County. He married well. <laughs> now, I have been very blessed to have been able to remain a teacher throughout my professional career. And it was great to be able to have been employed here at the college for the last 20 years of my career. The support that I received from all the staff was unbelievable. Everyone here has the students' needs and goals in mind, and we all work together to help them achieve their goals. I am glad I can still contribute to this great institution as a member of the Development Council. In conclusion, I would like to talk about some friends here at Delaware Tech. The first two are no longer with us, Dan Hall, he hired me in 1978 as a part-time instructor. My son, Merle C., and nephew, Eric, both had Dan for management classes and spoke highly of him as a teacher and a person. He was a leader of our, of our accreditation team when our department became nationally accredited. Howard Layton fellow classmate at Georgetown High School, co-captain of the undefeated football team of 1961, colleague at Delaware Tech. He was on my selection committee when I was hired full-time in 1981, 
And then we have Dr. Harriet Smith Windsor, former Secretary of State, former Human Resource Director of the State of Delaware, and former educator. She was on my selection committee when I was hired full-time in 1981. Those people definitely helped me out big time, and I've been very thankful to have been a part of this college and been able to have gotten in. Now, the, and, and a woman here. And now, I would like to talk about Walt Studi. I'll just say a few words, Walt. Very few. <laughs> Anyone or anybody that can't get along with Walt can't get along. And I believe that. You were a great leader, and I was blessed to be a part of your team. I think we did a good job, and I know we had lots of fun. <laughs> and last, now I would like to thank you all for coming out today and being a part of my life. Your support is greatly appreciated, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and that concludes our program for today. We really appreciate you all coming. Congratulations, Merle. Um, when we ask uh, if Merle and his family could join us here so we can get some photos before you leave. Thank have a great day, everyone. <laughs>